right, today is the day. Well, today is probably gonna be a short video. Of course, you probably know that by seeing the timestamp in the corner there. We are just gonna take a look at building a front wheel hub, that up right up there. And if you remember way back, I mean, probably years now, we built the rear end, set that one up, and uh, we've moved on to the front. And that is a milestone because that's gonna allow us to do the very last thing which we need to do, and that is to build our push rod Everything else is done on the suspension, but now we have the upright in place. We can put our push rod in there, and then the suspension is ready for this thing to go down and sit on all four wheels. But we're not gonna put it down right away. We're gonna actually flip it over and do some work on the bottom side of some fiberglass in the tub, and of course, an arrow tray on the bottom. And then this thing will be ready to put back together. And you may see behind me a little bit of uh, body work being taken place. And as soon as the bottom side is fiberglassed, then of course we can uh, finish all the bodywork and get this thing ready to paint. And that means we'll be painted and start to put this thing together permanently. Of course, now everything's just loosely assembled. We can put it together with torque specs and all those kind of things going together and have this thing ready to uh, fire up. So taking a look at building that front hub, let's jump in, take a look. To start off with, we're gonna go back and show you some old footage of some of the suspension pieces just to give you an idea of what was going on to get to the point of being able to have something to attach all these hubs to. And of course, uh, these pieces all built up, we need to put some bushings into them. Um, hydraulic press, uh, Harbor Freight Special, of course. It works really great for doing a lot of things. You can see me use it here in a couple different ways. Um, as a press, just like it was made for, and then a little piece of, uh, cast iron chunks put together and you have a press brake. What these are, these are little some corner pieces of the pickup points they would call them in racing. These are the parts that can attach actually to the frame or the chassis to hold our suspension. Um, get to put those together on the piece itself to actually get the spacing perfectly spaced out. These bushings have a little metal pin and that's what actually um, gets uh, bolted to it. And then this bushing is the part that does the rotating. Hopefully it never actually rotates, but it just flexes in rotation. So with these bolted in place, they are spaced perfectly. And then we'll take the whole assembly out after we've welded it here and put it onto the chassis in exactly the position it is going to go. Now this, uh, whole setup is uh, adjusted on the length of the a-arm and where the pickup point is put on the chassis but you can see that there are some adjustments there in those bushings that you can uh, thread those in and out and give you some of your angle to set up now we're going to start making some of the parts themselves for our hub so this is the main structural piece of it is a quarter inch thick piece of uh, tubing I need this thing to be perfectly parallel so I did not trust where the bandsaw cut these off at. We're going to throw it on the milling machine and uh, surface it off. Also get it the exact thickness we want. Thickness, width, whatever you want to call that measurement. And then we'll go ahead and clean that baby up, get it ready to weld. Another thing we need are some bushings that I've uh, also tapered to 7 degrees that fit all the ball joints top and bottom on the front hub. You had just the front ball joint on the rear. Now this whole assembly of the hub is going to be kind of a box structure based around that uh, quarter inch tubing. So first thing we're going to do is put the first face of that box on. No orientation needed since we have 360 degrees on that tube we can put it on anywhere we want. The rest of this stuff will have to start lining up according to that setup. Now there has been a uh, bevel ground on our uh, piece of tubing and a little bit of a bevel on that plate so we have a nice deep groove that we can lay our bead in but in fact this bead is on the back side so we do not have to take this surface down to a flat surface so this bead will just be left and exposed but we'll have good penetration anyway there now next thing those bushings that we created to uh, have our seven degree taper for our ball joints the top ones are going to be uh, welded inside this little piece of square tubing. That'll give it uh, strength in holding it in position and it will also help us to locate it squarely in the top of our main box section of this hub. 
Now that top surface, I'm going to switch over welders here, go to the TIG welder, because I want to weld that surface down flat. And in the end, that ball joint, mostly just the rubber uh, boot around it is going to ride up against that surface. So with the TIG welder, we can kind of get a nice beveled weld. Now moving on the sides of this box structure, pieces are cut out, but they're going to uh, taper in top and bottom. Let's put it back into our little uh, press brake that we have on our press. Put some angles on it. Now I don't have any way to uh, put a gauge on here to get the exact angle I do, so I just go by feel. Usually they'd be pretty good, but one of those was just a little bit off. So we had to take it to the anvil, bring it back a little bit flatter. Put it on the radius of the anvil, pound it, flatten it out a little bit. There we go. Now they're uh, both set at the right angle. So those side plates are also going to uh, be what sets our two plates parallel. We'll tack weld this uh, bottom piece in place. You see this little uh, simple welding table I built years and years ago. You can slide some of the sections apart. And so some weld something like this, so where the tabs go down, I can stick it in that drill. Or tip it towards myself off the end of the table. But we'll get the bottom side tack welded into place. And then we can go inside and uh, do all the internal welding we need to do because once we slide, of course, the last face of this box together, we won't be able to access the interior. There is a cross piece here on the bottom, right in front of the bottom ball joint, just to stiffen up the box a little bit. You also see a little radius cut on that back side. That is going to be our little access panel to slide our uh, castle nut inside there and get a wrench in there in the end as well. Well, that again, as much as this uh, interior welding as we need to get done before that top face slides on there and covers everything up. But this construction, a lot of this is used not so much on the edges, but on the top and the bottom plate, they have some slots slot and tab construction where once it slides on little tabs slide into those little square holes make sure everything is lined up straight that's kind of gives us all of our dimensional perfection all these pieces being cut out with the water jet of course this was all designed in just 2d cad so i have to think in 3ds while i'm drawn in 2d it would be nice. I did have a copy of SolidWorks. was just getting along with some solid modeling where I might have been able to take this thing into the sheet metal function and break it all apart and create all the pieces that would have fit perfectly then. Instead, I'm left to uh, use my 2D CAD because SolidWorks was just a little too expensive to pay $1,300, $1,400 a year when I didn't use it as much. I guess if I'd gotten really good at it, I probably would have used it more. But when I am so fast in the regular AutoCAD, it was hard for me to spend all the time in there. And I really didn't have a person to uh, help train me on that. Same thing I've got with uh, new software. I'm also using Rhino, Rhino 8. If anybody out there is a master in Rhino 8, I'd love to know it. I have somebody that could help me out in that. Anyway, with those side plates all tack welded in place, the top plate's on. It's time to go ahead and start putting all of our beads on there and get this thing solidly put together. Now we're kind of doing this in two sections, this being the first section, building the main box structure. And as we finish off all these uh, main long run welds, we're going to take this thing out and grind most of those back down. So we're trying to get as best penetration as we can along these seam welds. And they're kind of made to not lap each other, but just come short of covering each other up. That gives us kind of a corner radius that we can fill with our weld. And then we go out and grind it. We'll have a nice round smooth corner, but have some good penetration on the corners. Looks like now I've got all the quarters done and I'm going around uh, doing that last tie on the second plate and have it ground down, ready for the next function of this whole thing. And as I said, the second phase of this is to build the outside boxes that attach to it. 
that one being a flat surface and a square alignment for our brake calipers. Now, instead of me welding in very thick plates and trying to thread those, which has come to be a difficult situation in a little shop like this, I have opted to use a threaded insert. That threaded insert in this case just being a lug nut, which gives me a good M12 with a 1.5 pitch, a little finer pitch. And with the M12, nice big bolts should be plenty of strength for holding anything that this lightweight car should have put stresses on these brake calipers. But using the lug nut also gives you a lot more thread area than just the average nut. It's about one and a half times the thickness of a nut. The lug nut also has a little bit of a bevel that slides into a hole that was created with a water jet cutting. And that bevel helps also to align it somewhat. But we're not going to rely on that. We're going to use some measurements here to get that thing lined up. Now with the uh, those lug nuts welded in place, it's time to put this uh, plate back in after we've removed our caliper and get it lined up. We need it to be perfectly parallel with the front face of that round tube. That one tube is going to have our bearing mounted to it. So get our surface on one edge and check it and check it also on the far side where we get that thing parallel. Now this is somewhat not needed as the bolts themselves will line it up. But just to make sure everything is perfectly square, we get it there. We'll pack weld it to our lug nuts. Get as much weld as we can underneath there. And with that tack, we'll go ahead and start building our main box structure around this brake caliper mounting point. Now this is made with a, a small little plate that just attaches to the top of the box. And then on the front side, there's a whole plate that extends that down onto our round tube. The caliper is offset just a little bit towards the bearing rather than being that I couldn't have mounted it right back on the main box structure. So it has to shift the whole thing forward just about a half an inch. So our plate there has to extend down around that round tube. And we'll go ahead and get the same thing. All of our little plates are just a little bit short of each other so that we have a radius weld fills it in nicely. And we can go back and uh, grind these smooth, make them a little bit prettier. Now one of the last things we got to do here is uh, this is our uh, leverage arm for our steering mechanism. This is a heavy quarter inch plate. And it's got mounting point right where the hub makes that taper in bend. And that of course gives us with the distance it protrudes out of there, gives us the perfect alignment for making sure our Ackerman steering angle is correct. We'll get this thing squared and then we're going to go ahead and weld it with one pass. And then I'll also set it up and do a double pass to get the thing a really good heavy root weld so that it can't tear free. I could have uh, probably designed this to go inside, pass through the, the side section of the box. That would have given it a two points to attach it to, to give it some leverage strength. But I think with a couple of double pass welds, this thing will never come loose, at least with the lightweight of this car. And with our weld spatter and the heat, we're going to clean up the inside edge of that tubing for our last weld. And that is to put in the plate that the bearing mounts to. Again, it just been ground a little bevel on the tube and on the plate itself. Gives us a nice uh, groove to weld into. Give us good penetration there. We'll also flip it over and weld it on the inside to make it uh, permanent. It will never come free. We get this weld uh, finished. The only thing left is to uh, make this surface flat. Once again, this is going to be where the bearing mounts. So we're of course going to want that nice and flat. And if we get it just match the surface of that plate, it will be parallel to the rest of the stuff we've applied to this. And then we can take it out and do some grinding. I won't show you that though. But I will show you just a little bit of a powder coating job. I picked this uh, color that we've already done on the other suspension pieces, black diamond from Prisma Colors, if you're interested. 
And after uh, 12 minutes in the heat, a little cooling time, we're gonna pull this thing out and it is ready to install on the car. Here it is, the hub by itself. Throw the bearing on that flat surface we were talking about. Throw our rotors on and our brake calipers. The front is ready. Now I have the wheel bolted on permanently, but it looks like we've got some good rotation in the steering. Then move it into the rear, swing it up, put the top ball joint in, put the bearing on that one, throw the rotor and the caliper on there, and it's ready to go as well. And there the whole unit is. Suspension is all ready to go. Well, there it is, a long time coming. And I won't go into the aspect of everything taking a long time because I don't work on the car every day, all day. But I do want to emphasize the point that it takes a long time as well because we are not just pulling some suspension from an existing vehicle or using frame pickup points from something else as well. Everything, I mean everything in the suspension has been individually hand built, each component. So you have to take into account um, a camber, caster, Ackerman angle, bump stop, turn radius, um, I don't think I can even list all the things you have to look into to make this setup as well as you can. And when you're making it as well as you can, you have to add in a lot of adjustability, more so than just, like I said, bolting up something that already existed. And some of you are also gonna look at some of the welds and say, oh, what a crappy job he did of welding. Well, very, very likely that one of these suspension pieces or two suspension pieces and that upright itself will be rebuilt in the future. I fully expect that because I do not know exactly what's gonna happen when we get this thing on the road. If there is some kind of interference, doesn't look like it right now, seems to be okay, but there is gonna be something in there that needs to be replaced, adjusted, and so maybe I didn't spend a lot of time making everything perfectly precise and welded exactly as it should be, well, it's welded as it should be to be strong enough, maybe not to be perfectly crisp and clean with all those beautiful weld lines. In fact, if I get to that point, maybe I will hire that thing out to somebody who has the time and patience to meticulously do those perfect bead welds. Those things that you see on other welding channels that are devoted perfectly to welding because that's what they need to show you. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for coming along. Come back, see us again.